transistors. All right, so that's very important. Now let's go ahead and erase this. Let's work a fairly simple problem uh, just to kind of give you a little bit of experience on how you might actually use these things to simplify a circuit because a lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times you're given a circuit and you can use some of these rules to simplify the circuit into a simpler state. And I think you've learned by now that if you can simplify anything at all about a circuit, even one leg, if you can simplify it, then if you end up having to do Kirchhoff's laws or anything else, it makes everything else so much simpler. Okay, so here's the problem we're going to work. And you'd see something like this, where you would be given, in this case we have a current source, right? And we have a resistor network, all of the values are given to us. And we are told that there is some voltage across this current source. We always know that this is the case. All the current sources, they give you a constant current, but they of course always have to have a voltage across it. So what we're asked in this problem is, given this circuit, what is the value of V, the voltage across this current source? So that's what you would be asked. A lot of times on a test, you're not going to be asked, find the resistor simplification of this network, and then you have to do it. I mean, you might be asked that, but it's a little too straightforward. Most of the time, they'll just give you a problem and say, find the value of voltage V. And you can use anything you want. You can use series parallel reductions like we're going to do now. You can just bust into Kirchhoff's law if you wanted to. I mean, we could write a node uh, a Kirchhoff current law there. We could write a bunch of loops. We could calculate everything. And then eventually we get enough, enough things found where we can find the uh, voltage there. And we've done problems like that before. However, we look at this and we realize that, that there's a lot that we can do. For instance, this resistor is in series with this resistor. So 6 ohms and 10 ohms is 16 ohms, right? And once we get this reduction, we're going to have a resistor in parallel with the 64. And we can keep kind of working our way backwards until we really arrive at one single resistor hooked up to this current source. And then it's trivial to solve the problem. So Kirchhoff's laws, you could definitely do. There's absolutely no reason why you couldn't do that to solve this problem. However, because this network is so simple, we can just use series parallel reductions. So unfortunately, when you do this, you're going to usually need to redraw the circuit a few times. So uh, let me just kind of do it like this. You can do it any way you want in your paper. What I like to do is kind of draw a nice little light circle or something around what I'm doing. And I'll draw a little arrow to tell myself or my professor the following. The equivalent resistance, right, is equal to, and we talked about this, resistors in series, you just add them up. 6 plus 10 is equal to 16 ohms. That's all you have to write to indicate to somebody that you recognize this is equal to 16 ohms, right? So then, you know, if you want to do this correctly, if you're saving time on a test, you don't have to do all of this, but really the best thing to do is just rewrite it again. So you have the 5 amps here, you have a resistor here, you have a resistor up on top, you have the 64 ohm resistor here, and now you have a new resistor like this. Now let's make sure we understand what we're doing here. So what we have here, we have 30 ohms, here's 7.2 ohms, here's 64 ohms. Now look what happened. We have a resistor here and a resistor here. We're combining them into another resistance. That resistor is still connected between this point and this point. We've just simplified this. So the final resistor we have is in parallel with this guy right here because what we've simplified is still connected across the terminals of this resistor. So it's in parallel. So now we stop looking at this circuit, we look down here and we say, okay, what, what can we do next? You can't really add this to anything because they're not in series. There's branching going on here. But these two guys, these two guys are in parallel. So get your pencil out and draw a nice little circle here and draw yourself a little, a little note to yourself right there to, to tell you or your professor what's going on. Now these are resistors, two of them are in parallel. So the general form we already know. We talked about that, but we said there's a specific special case. If you have two of these guys in parallel, it's their product divided by their sum, product over sum. Say that to yourself. You're just going to use it a lot, product over sum. That's how you simplify this. So you just say the equivalent resistance is equal to the product. Let's do it like this to refresh your memory. R1, R2 over R1 plus R2. So in this case, it's simply 64 times 16 over 64 plus 16. All right, and so when we do this, let's switch colors here a little bit. My purple marker is not doing so well. So when we do 64 times 16, then we do the 64 plus 16 on the bottom, we're gonna get 
and I trust that, that you can do this simple calculation. You do the top and the bottom and then you divide, you get 12.8 ohms and that's what this is equal to. So again, we redraw the circuit. So we'll say, uh, actually what we're gonna do, let's redraw it over here just so we make sure and have room. So what we're going to have, we'll have the current source, we have the five amps going up here. Now we have the 30 ohm resistor right here, so we'll write 30 ohms. We have still the 7.2 ohm resistor here, but then what we're left with here after we've done this simplification is 12.8 ohms. Make sure you understand that. Once we combine these guys, they kind of live in one single resistor, which is now coming down like this, right on the tail end of the 7.2 ohm resistor. All right, so now we look at what we have. And we say, oh boy, I see something else I can do. Now I have this resistor in series with this one. So I can definitely do this. So let me just write a note to myself. Equivalent resistance is 7.2 plus 12.8, which is equal to 20 ohms. So this uh, series combination reduces to 20 ohms. All right, so then I come down and again, I redraw my circuit. So this is, I know it's a lot of redrawing, but it just, it's easier that way. You have the 30 ohm resistor, and now you have your new resistor that we've calculated. This is 30 ohms, and this is 20 ohms, because we've just summed these guys together. So 30 ohms and 20 ohms. So now we just have to simplify this guy, and we see that they're in parallel. So draw a little circle, telling professor or whoever what you're doing. So the equivalent resistance, because see, this is again the special case. It's only two resistors. If it were more than two resistors, then you have to use the full blown version. One over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over R3. And then when you get that, you take the inverse one over the answer. But in this case, since it's just two of them, we have a very simple rule, product over sum. R1, R2 over R1 plus R2. All right, and so what we are basically gonna have, R1 is 30 times 20 over 30 plus 20. So you multiply this, you add the bottom, and you're going to get 12 ohms. So just to make sure everybody's on the same page, we have a current source, it's 5 amps, and what we figured out basically from all of this simplification is that all of those resistors basically look exactly like a 12 ohm resistor. They look just like a 12 ohm resistor. And we'll just say that that's the equivalent resistance. Right, And um, we know that there's a voltage across this source, and this is what we were trying to find. Right, So how do we do that? We have a known current. We have a known resistance. So we just use Ohm's law, right? So V is equal to IR. Because the voltage across this source is the same as the voltage across this resistor because they're in parallel. The current, we already know what it is. It's 5 amps. So what we have is 5 amps flowing through this resistor is going to yield a voltage drop that's going to be exactly the same as what we have across our source. V is equal to IR. The current is equal to 5. The resistor is 12. So what you have is 60 volts. 60 volts is the answer.